Welcome to today's video. We will be looking at the early life and the current story of Modern Warfare's John Soap McTavish, who is portrayed by Neil Elise. Sergeant McTavish is a beloved and iconic character in the Modern Warfare series. Much of this is due to his appearance in the original Modern Warfare trilogy, and fans loved him right away due to his portrayal, and he hated the way that he died. So when he reappeared for this new trilogy, he had a lot of fans excited to see what he would do this time around. Now I'm working on this video due to popular demand. I really enjoy working on the story so far series, and we have covered in great detail the current Modern Warfare storyline and the Black Ops Cold War storyline. So in an effort to avoid repeating the same story over and over again, I wanted to look a little deeper into the characters themselves, and today we look at John McTavish. The main purpose is to look at his early life and career to better understand where he comes from and to get to know some of our favorite characters better. We will briefly cover the events of the game from the Sergeant's point of view. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the early life and the story of John Soap McTavish. John Soap McTavish is believed to have been born in the year 1996 or just a little before that. His birthplace is Scotland, United Kingdom, and as a kid growing up, he never thought about the military career. He grew up a football fan and enjoyed playing goalkeeper. However, his cousin, who was a member of the 23rd Regiment in the Special Air Service, invited him to see how life was as a member of the British Army. Soap was immediately intrigued, and after the initial visit to the base, he began to see his cousin more often. His love for the British Army grew, and by the time he was 16, he began to lie about his age to try and join up sooner. However, he wasn't successful as he kept being caught. Two years later, Soap finally turned 18, and he joined the official selection for the 22nd Regiment which was an elite squadron that specialized in covert reconnaissance, counterterrorism, and hostage rescues. Sometime after joining in 2014, McTavish was training in Herefordshire, and he was being evaluated by Captain John Price, who recognized the Scotland native's natural skills, exceptional proficiency, and relentless dedication. Captain Price began to push McTavish to make him the best trainee he could be. John McTavish would also be trained as a sniper and demolitions expert. His remarkable speed and accuracy in room clearance and urban warfare earned him the legendary nickname, Soap. When selection came, McTavish passed with the highest possible marks on all three faces of the course. He would only come a few seconds behind the record holder, Kyle Gaz Garrick. Soap became the youngest candidate to pass the Special Air Service selection in the history of the British Army. Soap was finally on the field and his first mission was alongside his former evaluator. He was a part of Captain Price Bravo where they were traveling to the Beirut Strait to secure a cargo manifest for potential WMDs. Soap retrieved the manifest but the vessel was scuttled by Russian aircrafts forcing them to pull out. However, Soap was the last to exfil and he almost fell to his death but the captain was there to pull him to safety. After this, Soap felt indebted to Price and Soap would continue to carry out covert and overt operations worldwide. Sometime later, Soap would receive a gallantry medal, the Victoria Cross and the conspicuous gallantry cross. After an operation in Urzikstan during which his patrol was attacked by Alcatala, the patrol's heavy machine gun malfunctioned. Soap would strip the weapon and reassemble it before firing 150 shots, recocking the gun for every round. Soap claimed that any and all of his comrades would have done the same thing. But in 2016, Soap ran into some trouble and almost faced disciplinary action for punching a military police officer, knocking him out cold, and locking him in his own vehicle. No charges were filed to avoid embarrassment for the military officer. Three years after Soap's incident, in early 2019, Sergeant McTavish was deployed to Vrindas, Kastovia, alongside Captain Price and other Special Air Service operatives. Their target? To stop Vladimir Makarov and his crew from terrorizing the stadium in Vrindansk. Soap and Captain Price captured Makarov. They transported him to a helicopter where Simon Ghost Riley and General Herschel Shepard were waiting for them. The team here realized that Makarov's real target was the airport which exploded shortly after. Soap became enraged with this and attempted to kill Makarov. However, Captain Price stopped him from doing so. I'll blow your Stop. fucking brains out, bro, if you hear me. I swear to God, I'll do it. Do it, come on. You shut your mouth. Let me finish him. <laughs> John, we have him. He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. I thought you were the good guys. You gonna rot in hell for this. You'll die in the gulag with the rest of the Russian rats. Later that year in November, Soap received a call from Captain Price who told him he was creating a new task force named 141, and he wanted the sergeant to be a part of it. John Soap McTavish gladly took the offer. Here we usually dive into the current assignments that the subject of our video is about. However, it saddens me greatly to say that Sergeant John Soap McTavish died in action in 2023 and he will never be on assignment again.
In October 2022, Soap met with Lieutenant Ghost and was tasked with apprehending Hassan Ziani, who had declared war on the U.S. for the death of General Gorbani. Alongside a squad of Marines, they boarded a helicopter and landed in a field in Al Masra. The transport helicopter was shot down shortly after they exited. At Ghost's orders, the squad cleared out a building, attacking the crash site moments later. Soap, Ghost, and the crash survivors defended the crash site from AQ soldiers. The team went to clear out another building, but were attacked by snipers, which Soap took care of. After clearing the final building, there was no trace of Hassan. However, they did find a missile container carrying American ballistic missiles. What the fuck is this? It's all in English. Steaming Jesus. Ballistic missiles. Some of our launcher. These will go a thousand miles. Yeah, at least. How the hell did Iran get their hands on this? 7-6, get us through to Laswell. Roger, stand by. Bravo 76 Charlie to Watcher 1. How copy? This is Watcher 1, send traffic. Laswell, this is Ghost. We got something. Tell me you found her son. Ghost. Take a look at this. Sometime later, Intel suggested that Hassan had escaped into Las Almas, Mexico, with the help of the local cartel. Soap and Ghost met up with Colonel Alejandro Vargas and his team, Los Vaqueros. Here, Soap got a taste of life in a small town in Mexico which he had a lot of worries about after he saw small children almost being groomed by the cartel. Kids, guns, and balloons. It's a new one. Narcos use generosity to win over the people. Even the children. Especially the children. What's on those sheets? Narcomantas. Cartel cloths. Messages from El Sinombre. Warnings marking territory. The streets are laced with death. Who's sin nombre? El Sinombre, the nameless, the leader of the Las Almas Cartel. Where can we find him? You can't. No one knows who he is. But he is everywhere. And this is a challenge. <laughs> Los vaqueros like challenges. With your mask, you will fit in well if you go. So you calmala. Checkpoint is the army. Turn right, we'll go around. Why? Some troops are in the pocket of El Sinombre. Like I told you, he is everywhere. Cartel is hiding Hassan in the village across the river. Let's hope he's still there. They arrived in a small village where Hassan was believed to be hiding. The team cleared out cartel members, but shortly after were attacked by the Mexican army. Go, Soap, and Alejandro tried to escape through the mountain trails and down the river. The attack by the Mexican army was heavy, but the shadows led by Commander Graves came to help the team out. After the squad regrouped, they determined a possible location for Hassan, and they began an assault on a cartel compound. Here, they captured Hassan. They transferred him to an isolated location in the desert and began to question him on the missiles. Task Force 141 is forced to release Hassan to avoid a political fallout. However, they planted a tracker on Hassan's phone. Later, so Ghost, Alejandro, and the Shadow Company acquired intel on a cartel estate party where the Las Almas Cartel leader, El Sin Nombre, was said to be. So volunteered to infiltrate the estate, which surprised Alejandro. Then we need to meet him. How? Give them what they want. Intel. They want to know who's here. Let's tell them. In person. Correcto. Get one of us inside. Find the boss. Roll him up. I'll do it. You go in there and they'll kill you, hermano. I'll take my chances. We came here to stop a missile. Let's stop it. I'll offer intel for a meet with Sinombre. And if he's there, we pounce. No, Orale. Tienes huevos, cabrón. You make it in, you'll need eyes and ears. I'll go to I'll take over, watch. Shadow circles the target in a helo. Roger that. They are going to want proof. Show him this. Call me when you need me. All right, let's gear up and get after it. Soap heads to the front gate of the estate where he claimed to have information. He is later interrogated by El Sin Nombre enforcer Diego Salgado and Valeria Garza. After this, they send Soap upstairs where an undercover Alejandro was waiting for him. Soap and Alejandro capture Valeria Garza after discovering that she is the infamous El Sin Nombre. They take her to Alejandro's Fuerzas Especiales headquarters. 
Valeria informed Task Force 141 that the missile was on an oil rig in the ocean. This led to Graves and his shadow company infiltrating the oil rig and finding the missiles. They were joined by Alejandro, Ghost, and Soap. After clearing the oil rig, Soap and Graves found the missile controls. With instructions by Commander Graves, Soap managed to make the missile hit the oil rig instead, which was a win for the team. <laughs> However, when Soap and the others returned to the Fuerzas Especiales headquarters, Graves announced that they were no longer needed and that the shadows were taking over the base on the orders of General Herschel Shepard. This put Soap on edge, who looked over at Ghost. Now they had their guard up. Alejandro got angry when Graves announced that his vaqueros had been detained, and a firefight broke out. Graves, what the fuck? shot in the arm and made a run for it into the town of Las Almas on Ghost's orders, while Alejandro was himself detained and Ghost seemingly escaped. Soap is bleeding from his gunshot wound and is completely alone. However, Ghost reaches out to Soap via the radio and tells him to meet him at the church. Lieutenant Ghost begins to guide the sergeant through the shadow troops that are looking for him in the town of Las Almas. Soap reunites with Ghost and they make an escape to Alejandro's safe house. Here they meet with Alejandro's second-in-command, Rodolfo Para and form a plan to break into the prison where Los Vaqueros and Alejandro are being held. What if I needed to know? Pressure plane. Alejandro rigged it. Smart bastard. There. Don't move! Quem está aí? Rudolfo. Soap. Ghost. You're alive. Affirmative. Good to see you, amigos. Igual, amigo. Nice throw. Where were you guys? On the run. I was on the run. Ghost waited for me. Of course, no? No. Yes. We're a team. All of us. This happened on my watch, and I'll need help to fix it. No one fights alone. Why did Graves turn? We don't know. Las Almas can corrupt anyone, not us. For now, General Shepard, Laswell, and anyone else outside this room is considered a hostile, mm. with one exception. Alejandro? We need him back. Ben? Graves is holding him here. His own personal black state prison. My team is locked in there, too. How do we get him back? By breaking in. And that's why I love the ghost. It's gonna take more than this. It's well stuck. All right. My man. We're gonna need new wheels. Preferably up armored. Alejandro thought of everything. Yeah, he did. Let's go get him. After they infiltrate the prison, they manage to free the vaqueros and escape. With the help of Captain Price and Gas, the team was then informed of the truth behind Shadow Company's betrayal. Task Force 141 and Los Vaqueros form a new joint group, JTF. They launch an attack on the Fuerzas Especiales headquarters. Soap and Rodolfo find Commander Graves, who has stolen a tank, to kill them. Here, Soap uses his combat experience to destroy the tank with multiple explosives. 
After the tank blows up, Soap announces that Graves is no longer a threat. You did it, Soap. You and me, Hermano, brought a gun to a tank fight. Yeah, we did. Soap the ghost. I'm with Rudy. Graves is KIA. The team heads back to Valeria and she reveals that Hassan is in Chicago with the last missile. Task Force 141 says goodbye to Alejandro and the Vaqueros, with Soap hoping to meet them once again in the future. Oh, you have work to do. Keep fighting the good fight, hermano. Do a better end, my brother. Good luck, amigos. Ghost! No te pierdas, carnal! No way about! Task Force 1 for 1 now heads to Chicago to finally stop Hassan. So, Price and Gas infiltrate the building where Hassan is located, while Ghost provides Overwatch. However, they are too late and the missile that Hassan had launched is headed towards Washington. When the team catch up to Hassan, they are overwhelmed by his forces and Captain Price is shot. Gas pulls him to safety and then Soap and Gas make their way to find Hassan to get the missile controls. However, while Soap is making his way down the elevator shaft, Hassan throws an explosive that almost kills Soap and Gas can no longer head down. Here Soap takes the controls from Hassan and makes a run for it. He then hides from Hassan and the Alcatala forces, and with Last Wolf's help, Soap is able to stop the missiles. But Hassan grabs a hold of Soap and almost executes him before Go saves him by killing him from afar. We're not attacking. <clears throat> we are invading. Perfect show, LT. You called it, Sergeant. All stations. Hassan's down. Enemy KIA. Sometime later, while celebrating in a bar, Last One informed Task Force 1 for 1 that the Russian ultra nationalists were behind the attack on Shadow Company that resulted in the missiles being stolen. Price is shown a picture of their leader, and his eyes light up. He shares the picture with his team, and Soap realizes it's Vladimir Makarov the man he almost killed back in 2019. Almost a year after the events that occurred in Chicago on November 10th, 2023, Task Force 141 are about to begin an unknown mission. However, Laswell radios Price and tells him that Makarov has escaped. This causes Captain Price to tell the pilot to turn around and to bring Task Force 141 back to base as he informs them of the news. Later that day, Soap and other members of Task Force 141 were deployed to a nuclear plant in Urzikstan. After Connie forces were spotted on the plant, Soap and Gans were tasked with securing the perimeter. While Price and Ghost reconnaissance the plant, the team finds out that Connie forces are trying to transport containers of sarin gas. The Connie group is able to get away with the gas, and Price nearly loses his life while trying to prevent them from doing so. But Soap and the others rescue the captain and take him to a helicopter to leave the nuclear plant. Task Force 1 for 1 is able to track the missiles that Connie had stolen earlier. One missile is stopped by Farah and Captain Price, while the last two aren't able to be stopped in time, and they launch for a military base that Laswell was on. She was meeting with a contact in hopes of finding a location to Makarov. After this missile launch, Task Force 1 for 1 meets with Laswell and Nikolai. Laswell informs Captain Price that there is a video call from a secure line in the Pentagon, and it is General Shepard, and so seems to be sarcastically shocked when he sees him. Shepard reveals that Graves is alive and helping him get intel on Makarov. This immediately pisses off Sergeant Soap, who has a quick back and forth with the commander of the Shadows. Kate, let's talk. I've been looking for you. John, it's a family affair, even better. What do you want? Vladimir Makarov, same as you. Go on, General. I got a lead on Makarov's bankroll. We're not looking for money. Soap, you find the money, you find the man. Where are you getting intel? Without an army, you got nothing. Wrong again, boys. Unfucking believable. So, you missed me? Well, technically, you did, didn't you? Last well. If you're tracking this, let's call an airstrike. Ghost, that is not nice. What are you up to? I'm up to doing my fucking job, kid. You should try it sometime. My fucking job is to kill the enemy. Guess what you are? Let's keep this professional, boys. Captain, let me paint you the bigger picture. 
However, a temporary truce is forged between Task Force 1 for 1 and the Shadow Company as they work together to find and kill Makarov. Shepard gives Laswell intel regarding Makarov's financier, Milena Romanova, who is located on a remote island with a large security force protecting her. Soap and Ghost then infiltrate the island to interrogate Milena and find out about Makarov's next move. The intel gathered from Romanova's interrogation led to Task Force 1 for 1 to a Connie Group outpost in St. Petersburg. Here, Task Force 1 for 1 captured Andrei Nolan, Makarov's right hand man. From him, they learned that Makarov was transporting someone to an abandoned prison complex in Siberia. They intercepted the convoy and realized that that person who Makarov was transporting was General Shepard, which made Captain Price angry. Gash reminds the captain that they need to move. Later, Shepard tells Task Force 1 for 1 that he had good intel regarding Makarov and that they'd get it once they get him out of there. Later, General Shepard is brought to a remote location in Siberia where they tell him to tell Congress the truth behind all of his past dealings. Task Force 1 for 1 and Soap take the general and leave Siberia. After this, Shepard reveals that Makarov wants to blow up the Gora Dam in order to flood Verdansk and kill its inhabitants. His plan is to blame it on Farah in the west. Soap and Ghost head to the Gora Dam to disarm the explosives, which they do successfully. Later, Soap receives information from Laswell and the team that Makarov is in London and planning an attack, Sergeant Soap and Gas are deployed on the ground to track a hacker that Makarov has employed. Soap overhears a conversation between the hacker and one of Makarov's men. Soap learns the location of a buyer. Task Force 1 for 1 and the SFO gather at an abandoned tunnel in Amsley Street, where they manage to kill the buyer and acquire the flash drive that has a virus that will affect the trains in London. However, the virus was already uploaded to the train system before the death of the buyer. This granted the Connie Group the ability to control the train, and Task Force 1 for 1 learns that Makarov plans to destroy one of the train tunnels. Task Force 1 for 1 alongside the SFO approach the Channel Tunnel. Here they split up. Gas, Ghost, and the SFO take one side with Price, Soap, and the rest of the SFO taking the other. Soap and Price move together, taking out members of the Connie Group. Soap seems to be very ready for Makarov and hopes to finally capture him and put him down. However, Captain Price and Soap run into a group of Connie members guarding a bomb. Soap must defuse the bomb, while Price and the other SFO members will provide cover for Soap. As the attack grows, Soap overhears Captain Price calling to Gas and Ghost to come and reinforce them. Soap and Price are just about to defuse the bomb when Makarov and his men ambush them from behind. Red wire, got it. Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. All stations, this is Bravo in the blind. Threat neutralized. Bomb is safe. One KIA. He was the best of us. The toughest. He'd have fought the world barehanded. Who dares wins? Sleep easy, soldier. See you damn range, brother. We'll take it from him. Rest in peace, Johnny. That is the complete story and early life of Sergeant John Soap McTavish. Soap was one of my favorite characters this time around and I really like this take on the character. But I think he suffered greatly with the creation of Modern Warfare 3 as a whole. There were glimpses of greatness from him but Modern Warfare 3 was so bad that he died 
too fast and too quickly, and I think they blew it. Neil Elise did a fantastic, a fabulous job as the sergeant, and it really makes me sad that Soap will no longer be a part of the team moving forward. Thank you for joining me on another episode of The Story So Far, and please let me know who you would like to see me cover next. I thought you were the good guys. You gonna rot in hell for this. You'll die in the gulag with the rest of the Russian rats. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise.